are these people? We know this guy too. McLeod. I forgot that I brought this article. Oh, and this is a whopper too. Holy crap. All right. Why are you going to talk in burger terms all the time? What do you mean? Because burgers are life. <laughs> now, this, this article was earlier uh -huh. in May, but it slipped through most people's radar, I'm sure. From proper not to new lines, yeah. how Washington is weaponizing media. So I thought this fit along with the Election Integrity Partnership, as well as with the CIA stuff that we're about to cover. But specifically here, what Alan yeah, does. It. Go ahead. I've had it on the chopping block a few times, so I knew that it was too long. It's a little too long, but oh. it's not too long for the show, and we're going to cover it because I, I haven't done an Alan story in a while. Alan McLeod is an outstanding journalist. He is an Indie Media Award honoree, of course, as is Mint Press News, the outlet that he works and publishes for in this case. He's published for others, but Mint Press is great. Support Mint Press, support independent media. We do all the time. All right, so what's going on with New Lines? New Lines magazines purports to be an independent media organization. Now, you and I have been talking about this for a while, the quote-unquote corporate-funded independent media space. Yet it constantly attacks genuine alternative media who stray from Washington's official foreign policy line, all while employing many spooks, spies, and other figures at the heart of the national security state. Wow, it sounds like another version of Bellingcat. Sounds like another version of Bellingcat, honestly, in a way. But it's a magazine. Yep. Worse still, its parent Ooh. organization, the New Lines Institute, has recently admitted to being directly funded by the U.S. government. Mint Press News takes a closer look at this shady organization acting as Washington's attack dog. And this is why I brought it, because, again, the U.S. government funding this, and these are the people that are starting to now tr try to get involved in policing election integrity or you know okay. what is misinformation with regard to elections if you read the wikipedia entries for many alternative media outlets they're written off as fringe conspiracy websites pushing debunked foreign propaganda mint press news for example is described as a far left news website which publishes disinformation and anti-semitic conspiracy theories uh antiseptic the Gray Zone is similarly smeared as a fringe blog known for its misleading reporting uh -huh, and sympathetic coverage of authoritarian regimes such as Syria, Venezuela, and China. China. Oh, good, good timing there. The evidence for these evidence light smears comes primarily from the U.S. foreign policy journal New Lines magazine a product of the New Lines Institute. New Lines is a very new organization that was established only in 2020. Despite this, it has already become a key player in setting U.S. agendas worldwide, boasting a staff of more than 50 and working with over 150 contributors. Hmm. Headquartered on the prestigious Massachusetts Avenue Northwest, where there's some of the most expensive real estate in the world, it sits between foreign embassies and many of America's most prestigious think tanks, a stone's throw, both metaphorically and physically, from the White House. That's that's a little weird. How does, how does an agency like that, an independent agency, get that kind of funding? New Lines describes its goal as seeking to shape U.S. foreign policy based on a deep understanding of regional geopolitics and value systems. Uh -huh. It began by focusing solely on the Middle East, but quickly expanded to cover Ukraine, China, Venezuela, and China. other other political hotspots that most concern hawks in Washington. I'm guessing Mexico would be in there somewhere too. It certainly shapes, shapes public debate, and its research and experts are regularly quoted in influential outlets like the New York Fuck You Times, the Washington Suck My Dick Post, and Fake News CNN. <laughs> By the way, those those were um, out of... Will Ferrell did the, a whole bit 
where he was George H W Bush, and that's what uh, George W Bush, and he referred to those those two outlets as that. I didn't just make that up out of you know whole cloth, but. So who's in this New Lines Institute? Well, according to Allen, it's a rogues gallery of U.S. officials. Of course. New Lines presents itself as an independent organization, claiming that it is one of the few think tanks in Washington with no foreign or local agendas. Uh -huh. Yet its higher ranks are packed with former state officials. This sounds almost like the Hudson Institute reinvented. Yeah. She Chief amongst them is New Lines Institute and found, founder and president Ahmed Alwani. Alwani served on the advisory board of the U.S. military's Africa Command and influenced Washington's Middle yep. East positions. And you might recognize that name. Yep. His New Lines biography boasts that he met the commanding generals of Fort Jackson, Fort Hood, Fort Bragg, Naval Station Norfolk, and Joint Base Andrews, as well as then-Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld and his staff numerous times oh. during the Iraq War to consult on U.S. policy, something that many might not consider a badge of honor. Alwani also founded Fairfax University, a controversial private educational institution that Virginia state regulators considered shutting down in 2019. Auditors found that teachers weren't qualified to teach their assigned courses, academic quality was patently deficient, plagiarism was rampant, and students' English levels were abysmally poor, making Fairfax look like more a degree mill than a legitimate university. <clears throat> Trump University hmm. reincarnated anyone? New Line Senior Director Faisal Itani has a similar notable past. Before joining the organization, Itani was simultaneously a senior fellow at the Atlantic Council, which is a NATO think tank that serves the brains of the military alliance, but also an adjunct professor of security. Oh, I missed something somewhere. Somewhere. Uh, somewhere. Uh, other new key New Line staff members with similar pasts include Tashi Kogyal, who served in the Obama administration at the Department of Justice, and as a special assistant to the administrator of USAID, an organization that has overseen a host of foreign regime change op operations. They seem to like the color uh, revolutions themselves. Then you've got Kamran Bokhari, he's formerly the Central Asia Studies Course Co Coordinator at the State Department's Foreign Service Institute. You've got Tanya Domi, who's a 15-year U.S. Army veteran who also served at the State Department as a spokesperson and counsel for multiple American ambassadors to Bosnia and Herzegovina. Jeez, this roster is insane. Tommy Palacios currently employed by the U.S. Military Academy as a counterterrorism research fellow. And then you've got Michael Weiss, a non-resident senior research fellow at, again, NATO's Atlantic Council. But none of these people has any foreign policy agenda whatsoever, right? Nope. When it comes to attacking alternative media, Weiss in particular has a notable past. In late 2016, an anonymous organization called Prop or Not published a list of some 200 websites that it classified as routine peddlers of Russian disinformation. I would guess that many of those are... Russian scum! Many of those, by the way, are indie media award honorees. Many leading alternative media outlets were smeared on that list, including Mid Press News, WikiLeaks, Truth Out, Truth Dig, which doesn't exist anymore, Naked Capitalism, and Antiwar.com. So, yes, you've got three right there named, plus the, of course, oh, WikiLeaks. Never had to retract the story. The charges were false, but the effect was staggering. The proper not list went viral, hosted by mainstream outlets such as the Washington Post, which insinuated that a massive Kremlin-controlled propaganda network 
was responsible for Donald Trump's electoral victory. We're still hearing Russiagate. Google, Facebook, and other prominent social media platforms subsequently changed their algorithms to punish the outlets on the list and promote authoritative content like the Washington Post or Fox News. Mint Press News lost more than 90% of its Google search traffic almost overnight, never to return. It was later revealed to, that Proper Not was likely Weiss's brainchild, meaning that the hysteria over a foreign government interference in our media was probably a domestic government funded operation. Mm. This is not this is not the other Weiss that called people a sod or whatever. Not Barry Weiss, no. The same one. No, this is Michael Weiss. Thank you, sir. And this is also not the, gotcha. the this is also not the Philip Weiss from Mondo Weiss, obviously. <laughs> I'll bet Mondo Weiss was probably on that I list also. If there's a relation. A number of other key New Line staff also previously worked at Stratfor, which is an organization often referred to as the Shadow CIA, a private group carrying out intelligence gathering on behalf of the US government. <sighs> now, Perhaps the most notable New Lines Institute employee, however, is non-resident fellow Elizabeth Tsurkov. Tsurkov is a Russian-born Israeli who, before, in, before joining New Lines, worked at a number of hawkish think tanks, including the Atlantic Council and Freedom House. She grew up in Israel and served for many years in the Israeli military intelligence, including during Israel's 2006 invasion of Lebanon. She also worked directly for former Israeli Minister of Interior and Deputy Prime Minister Natan Sharansky um, in 2015. She published a photo of her at the Pentagon claiming she was on a special mission accompanied by the State Department. So there's definitely a close partnership there. Sherkov was an obscure figure who only came to international attention in 2023 when she was arrested in Baghdad, carrying out what authorities described as a spying mission. Hmm. The news media made worldwide headlines, with many official figures in the West leaping to her defense, describing the charges as ridiculous. That's, that's ridiculous. And a man in my position cannot be afford to be made to look ridiculous. That's for the Godfather. It transpired that she had concealed our, her identity, entering Iraq on a Russian passport, and then presented herself as a Russian researcher and a supporter of Shia cleric Muqtada al-Sadr, when she obviously was not. A 2022 video interview shows Tsurkov in Baghdad dressed in a kimar, a modest black dress and head covering. Quote, it's clear that Muqtada al-Sadr is a patriotic figure who rejects intervention from any country, whether in the West or the East. In my opinion, this should be the position of every Iraqi political leader, she says, adding that the U.S. is an oppressor nation. She's playing a very, very dangerous role. This is a blatant deception, given that she is a former Israeli intelligence officer who has worked for NATO's think tank. In fact, Surkov has long taken hostile anti-Shia positions, supported Sunni militias in Syria, and championed U.S. military intervention in the region. Yeah, somebody you would totally want to be in line with, right? Mm -hmm. For years, she was one of the most outspoken Syria regime change hawks online, downplaying the U.S.-backed moderate rebels' connections to al-Qaeda, and even promoting the Gay Girl in Damascus blog, an online personality purporting to be a Syrian opposition organizer that was later unmasked as a pro-regime change hoax run by an American student at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland. Wow. We covered, we covered a bit of this in another story from Internet, uh that Dick Clarenberg cut out about Palestinian refugees and how they're used and funneled into these uh, organizations put up by think tanks and British intelligence. You know, 
So, it, you know, more of the same sounds like. Turkoff initially claimed that she was in Iraq to conduct academic research for Princeton University. Here's the problem. This was also the position taken by the Israeli government, whose laws prohibited citizens from even traveling to Iraq without special dispensation. Oh, she's an academic who visited Iraq on her Russian passport, her own initiative, pursuant to work on her doctorate and academic research on behalf of Princeton University in the U.S., State of the Office of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. She literally has Bibi speaking out for her. But of course, ready for this one? Princeton, however, categorically denied that it had allowed her to go to Iraq on university business. Okay. So wait a minute. Let's back this up a minute. She's caught in Iraq using a Russian passport. She's been saying here... And she's aligning with Shia, uh, with Sunni and anti-Shia stuff. But she goes over there and parrots a completely opposite line. Says that she's on a research project for Princeton, but Princeton says she's not there for her. She's a former Mossad intelligence agents officer or, or military intelligence officer who has BB literally speaking out on her behalf. Yeah, that's totally not fucking shady. Yeah. As Alan says, thus very little well, of her are, story. What's these that? groups do stuff like these stuff do, uh, like these groups do stuff like build fucking coffee shops and like funnel young people into, you know, uh, school organizations and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. you know. We've heard first counts accounts of that in our space as well, where that's how they're recruiting these people. Yep. You know? Thus, very um, little about her story makes any sense, of course, leading many to conclude that Iraqi authorities were correct in their assessment of Surkov. Adding weight to their story is the complete radio silence from new lines since her arrest and imprisonment. In more than one year, neither the New Lines Institute nor its magazine has released so much as a sentence addressing the detention of one of the Institute's more senior staff members. Okay, that's weird. In a video released in November, Turkov stated that she was actually in Iraq on behalf of the CIA and Israeli intelligence outfit Mossad. Her goals were to foment intra-Shia division and strife to organize and support anti-corruption protests. So wait, she was trying to basically push color revolution. Huh. I didn't think the CIA did that. He also said oh, that she... that everywhere. Oh, right, Name right. after flowers and all sorts of stuff. Hmm. She also said that she traveled to Syria to build ties between Israel and the Sunni Syrian opposition forces. Uh-huh. Given that she had been detained for over half a year by this point, it's not clear if she was coerced into confessing. That's possible. Look, she could have been tortured into giving that confession. Now, studying their output, it is clear that New Lines has two principal targets, nations that the U.S. has deemed enemy states and alternative media outlets that question the narratives that New Lines and the U.S. government are trying to establish. Ding, 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 ding. That's us here, too. Indeed, New Lines has yep. spent years investigating alternative media, promoting a narrative that opposition to U.S. foreign policy equals being in the pay of, the en of enemy foreign countries. A 2022 article titled, quote, How the Pro-Putin West is Coping with Russian Defeat in Ukraine, unquote, Presented journalists such as Max Blumenthal and Michael Tracy, as well as renowned academic Professor Noam Chomsky as Kremlin advisors, and claim that Ukraine's lightning counteroffensive and the rapid territorial advances had left Russia defeated. News of this defeat will no doubt surprise many reading in 2024. But this sort of disinformation about disinformation has become a common method of attacking and smearing anti-war voices. 
Another article describes what it calls an echo chamber of Syria conspiracy theorists. It mentions Mint Press and a host of the other alternative media outlets, including Indie Media Award honoree Consortium News, Project Censored, Free Speech TV, Media Roots, the now defunct but also Indie Media Award winning Shadow Proof, Indie Media Award winning Gray Zone, Indie Media Award winning Truth Out, Indie Media Award winning Top Dreams, and of course, Indie Media Award winning Antiwar.com. New lines again attack Mint Press News for our coverage of Latin America, claiming that we back leftist dictatorships by looking the other way as they crushed protests. The report appeared particularly annoyed that we did not support the 2021 Cuban protests, a um, movement that it lionized as an anti-racist uprising led by the local hip-hop community. Mint Press showed that the Cuban demonstrations were led by artists funded, trained, and supported by the National Endowment for Democracy and U.S. Aid, which are part of the same network that funds new lines and are directly tied to the CIA okay. and to Homeland Security. We know this. Well, I've been in the office and I've not seen any. Oh, right. That's right. The Gray Zone had that conversation with the woman from the USAID who, who denied anything and played stupid. Groups like the DSA and the Center for Economic and Policy Research, as well as journalist Ben Norton and author and public intellectual VJ Prashad, were also singled out for their support for anti-imperial governments in Latin America. Lucy from Blue Moon Red Wine would have a whole different issue with Ben Norton. We have plenty of, of issues with DSA. We think that actually they are aligned with the Democratic Party way too much because Democrats don't represent anything having to do with socialism. And trying to thread that needle is a joke. All right. State-funded media. Considering its output, its constant support for U.S. policy and attacks on both domestic and international opponents of Washington, speculation was rife that the U.S. government was secretly funding new lines. But the Institute had always denied this, presenting itself as a neutral, agenda-free organization. Sure. That was at least that was at least until late last year when it announced that it had reached a cooperative agreement with the Modern War Institute at the U.S. Military Academy at West Point to jointly develop actionable recommendations for U.S. global leadership to address pressing global security challenges. That certainly does not sound like unbiased. In other words, to plan out American military strategy. The New Lines Institute also noted that they would now serve as an intellectual resource for solving military problems. Uh huh. As if they hadn't been doing this the whole time. Now they just went public about it. Days later, New Lines About Us section was updated, removing all reference to being funded by the Fairfax Foundation. <laughs> hmm and inserting a clause admitting U.S. government financial support, strongly suggesting that the military is now bankrolling it. It now reads, emphasis added, funding for the New Lines Institute is provided by the Washington Institute for Education and Research, a 501c3 nonprofit organization registered in Washington, D.C. The other paragraph, now, well, here's the other one. New Lines Institute accepts research grants and charitable donations from U.S. individuals, registered U.S. legal entities, and the U.S. government in support of its research priorities, and only insofar as such support is in compliance with U.S. laws and regulations, aligns with the Institute's vision, mission, purpose, and principles, and falls within its core areas of expertise, namely intelligence, global threats, military, and murdering brown people worldwide. Uh-huh. Yeah. The news did not come as a shock to those paying close attention. It will come as a surprise to no one that the new line that new lines is funded by the US government, wrote investigative journalist Matt Kennard, uh, also Indie Media Award honoree from Declassified UK on Twitter. 
There is a certain tenor to the articles of these cutouts that is certainly that is instantly recognizable, slightly critical to be convincing, but only up to a point which leaves state narratives robust. Others were even more scathing. Uh, here's Aaron Mate. Oh, Aaron Mate. Congrats to the to New Lines on their collaboration with the Modern War Institute at West Point Military Academy, he quipped. A good reminder that people who smear Gray Zone and other independent journalists as state funded are often projecting. That's, you done messed up, A.A. Ron! That's the buzzsaw right there. With their quiet in admission of U.S. government funding, New Lines joins an ever-growing list of organizations like Graphica, we mentioned Ben Nimmo's organization earlier, and Bellingcat, fuck those guys, Bellingcat. that present themselves as independent but are funded by the U.S. government, or British government, or both. Former U.S. state intel and intelligence officials staff them and dutifully report U.S. government narratives and talking points. And then claim that they're independent. Through their reports and studies, groups like New Lines launder Washington's narratives into the public domain, smuggled in under the guise of objectivity. Worse still, New Lines has been at the forefront of attacking and demonizing the few dissenting voices left in American society, like us. But nobody knows about us yet. Watch out, motherfuckers. Their reports being used further marginalize alternative media, the only place where serious domestic critique of U.S. foreign policy can occur. It is therefore doubly crit crucial that organizations like New Lines are understood for precisely what they are, the State Department's attack dogs. Alan is outstanding, and he always brings yeah. receipts, he brings backgrounds, Gotta love them. Um, if if you appreciate the, the stories we select, if you like shows like this and want to support independent networks that are user-funded, there are several ways to do that here at INN. You've got that QR code down there. Uh, that, that will go toward the Jesse, Jen, com Jesse Jet Computer Fund. We've got a Patreon for monthly subscriptions as well as Substack where we publish our weekly update. There will be one going out on, on Friday. Um, Rumble, where we have our our video streaming um, when we're not censored by YouTube. Well, alternately, we also stream to Rumble, and they don't censor like YouTube does. And then, of course, if you want to get us cash right away, the easiest and best way to do that is via Cash App, dollar side, Indie News Network, I-N-D-I-E, News Network. Um, really appreciate no every... Money! Well, that would be nice. Some money would be nice. Um, we are totally user funded. Money, please. If if you are unable, don't feel bad. Please enjoy the stream. Share the content. We are heavily suppressed across all social media. Um, basically, uh, anybody I share it with, it, uh, the, you know, I DM it to will share it, and it doesn't go any further than that. It's incredibly frustrating. Um, 